Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today I want to go over some stuff that I went over in yesterday's video, but a little clearer, I guess. It seems like some people didn't understand what I was saying about Benitez's ruling on the assault weapons ban in California when I was relating it to Bruin and to Heller. So I want to go over that, and I also want to cover how in this decision, uh, Benitez did not limit himself to just discussing the law. He actually basically ridiculed the methods that the anti-gunners are using to try to validate these unconstitutional gun laws. And I want to go over that too. First, let's talk about how he was ridiculing the anti-gun people. Uh, there were some, you know, that are major uh, movers and shakers with the Giffords Association. I forget what they actually call their group because I don't care. Uh, one of them's last name is uh, Busey or Busey or Bussy or something like that. And he's apparently trying to run for governor in, I think it might be Montana right now. I don't, don't quote me on that. But he tore him apart, basically said, yeah, you had a position as an executive in a company that made mostly handguns, and I don't see anything on your resume that would say that you are an expert on AR-15s, or that you would even know much about them at all. Yet you're trying to present yourself as an expert witness and present your testimony as expert testimony when you have no qualifications. And that's common with the anti-gunners. They're like, I'm an expert because I know someone that was shot or my family member was shot. So now I'm an expert so I can give expert testimony. Uh, that's just not the case usually. Usually these people they bring in as experts don't know anything about the subject they're talking about. And Benitez actually called him out by name on this in the ruling. So that was kind of funny. And a lot of people who uh, are more aware of this busy, busy, bussy guy that I am uh, really thought that that was uh, hysterical. And I agree, it's funny that he's calling them out. They don't usually do that. Another thing he called out is one of the other expert witnesses was citing studies trying to prove the effectiveness of AR-15s or the ineffectiveness of AR-15s in self-defense situations. And the judge says, you put forward these studies and you say, here's what they show. But then when you actually look at the study, it doesn't show what you say it shows. It's not even about what you say it's about. And that's an old tactic they use too. They use unrelated studies that have vague findings that are in no way related to self-defense or anything like that. And they try to present that as evidence, but they want you to take their word on it for what it says, because they don't expect most people to read it. So it's a game. They're putting forward false information, telling you it's something else, telling you it's expert uh, verified information, and counting on the fact you're not going to read it. They're playing a game. And he called them out on that. That happens so often. Uh, and here's another thing. This is just me throwing my own two cents in there. They showed that, oh, AR-15s shouldn't be allowed because they're almost never used for self-defense. That's one of their arguments. Since when is an item being used for self-defense uh, required for something to be protected under the Second Amendment? I guarantee you, you could say right now, hey, you know, not a lot of Smith & Wesson 586 LCOMs are used for self-defense. And you'd be right. They're not. That's just one specific gun. Just like an AR-15 is one specific rifle. And there are multiple cases of AR-15s being used in defense of home, property, self, and others. So it does happen. It's just that we live in a country where everybody's not having to shoot each other every day. Seems like a lot of these anti-gunners want to have to have proof. They want to see people shooting each other every day to show you need it. And that's ridiculous. But getting back to what uh, Benitez said, uh, as far as with the Heller decision, uh, when I was relating it to the Heller decision, one of the arguments that Bonta is making for the state of California to be able to ban assault weapons is that since they allow you to have other rifles, they don't have to let you have assault rifles, that they can ban some because they allow others, that they can infringe on your rights somewhat because it's not really an infringement because you can still go out and buy a rifle. You just can't buy that one. 
And Heller decided that that was not a valid argument. That you can't say in the state of, or not state of, but the district of Washington, D.C., that uh, just because we don't let you have handguns doesn't mean we're infringing on your rights because you can buy other guns, shotguns, etc. So it's really not an infringement because you can still buy a gun, just not that type of gun. Heller struck that down as a ridiculous argument. And Benitez pointed that out in his ruling. That's when he was talking about how uh, saying that it's okay to ban ARs because you're allowed to have other rifles is like saying it's okay for the government to ban certain books if there's other books you can have. You know, you can read other things, you just can't read these books. That'd be like saying it'd be okay for the government to shut down Fox News because there's other news sources. So it's not really uh, censorship if they're allowing you to hear from other things, just not this one. That was basically the whole principle of that argument. And it was a shaky legal argument from the beginning. It's just that a lot of leftist judges and lawyers were willing to accept it and look the other way and go, yeah, that makes sense, but it's, you know, makes sense to me. Uh, so that's the only reason that ever stood. Heller got rid of that and Bonta still using it. He's still using that. The other big argument that they're using to try to validate the assault weapons ban, assault weapons, uh, is, I'm gonna get cramps in my fingers from this, uh, is that the public interest outweighs the infringement from people not being able to have AR-15s. And how that relates to Bruin is in the Bruin decision, they clearly state that public interest is not allowed to be a factor, period. It doesn't matter if you can come in and say, oh my God, if people can buy stuff, it's going to be the Old West and we're going to lose, thousands of people are going to die. Can't, doesn't matter. That's not an argument you can use. If you're so afraid that people are going to be able to buy ARs and they're just going to be going on a killing spree, well then do what you can to make sure that doesn't happen, but you can't stop them from having the tools. That's like saying, oh my God, if people are allowed to say what they want on the internet, they're going to say bad things. Or if they're allowed to stand in front of the courthouse and say what they want, they're going to say things the government doesn't like. And it's dangerous because people might rebel against the government. It's basically the same argument. And if it doesn't work for the First Amendment, it doesn't work for the Second Amendment. Because that's another thing that Bruin said. The Second Amendment is not a second tier right. You know, a lot of people consider, oh, well, freedom of the press and freedom of speech, that's a first tier right. Uh, you know, uh, freedom from search and seizure, blah, 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 first tier right. But, oh, Second Amendment, that's like a third and fourth tier right. No, they're all first tier rights. And you don't get to decide who gets those rights. You don't get to place barriers in front of that right for certain people. And you don't get to put obstacles in front of those rights for people. Bruin did all that. Yet Bonta is still trying to use all those arguments. The public interest, which isn't allowed. He keeps trying to use that. The whole, it's okay to ban some things because we let you have other things. He keeps trying to use that. Newsom and Bonta know what they're doing is unconstitutional. They know what they're doing is wrong and illegal, but they keep doing it because it satisfies the people who give them lots of money. The money is more important to them than anything. They don't care about citizens. If they cared about citizens, they'd be doing something about, you know, the high crime rates among gangs and uh, low income minority groups, etc. They'd be working to solve those problems. They're not. They're just making it to where only rich people can have what they want, which is very racist in my opinion. And they're doing it because it gets them money and support from the people they want money and support from. They don't care about the people at all. In fact, all the studies that they do on, oh, do, if people have access to whatever they want, violence is going to skyrocket, none of that ever pans out. Now, I know they love to pick and choose things from studies and go, oh, well, look at this town in, West, in, in Texas that's got very loose gun laws. They got very high crime rates. But that doesn't hold wall, uh, water when you look at it scientifically because there are uh, counties and, and states in the uh, Northeast that have the same laws as that state that don't have high crime rates. And the difference is they don't border Mexico and they have different population makeups and different socioeconomic norms. So they leave out information to try to make it look like they use, you know, uh, 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 they, they throw causality to the wind and just use 
loose association. So that's what they do. That's their game. And Bonta's still doing it. And for once, a judge called them out on all of it. That's what Benitez did in this ruling. And I, for one, am thrilled. All right, with that being said, before I go here, I want to add one little bit of info here. I added the last Halloween-related t-shirt to my website today. There's a link in the upper corner of this video where you can go and buy merchandise, either Halloween-related or not, to help support TYM Triple P. Uh, today, I added the one called The Things That Suck. Now, this isn't necessarily a Halloween design, but it does have a vampire on it, in case you wanted it for Halloween. So I wanted to get it up today so that people could get it for Halloween if they wanted to. So uh, it's got a vampire, a vacuum cleaner, and a Caltech on it. And the title, like I said, is Things That Suck. I kind of presented it like a game show, like a puzzle. Uh, and I did this kind of satisfy the Caltech people that thought that high point shirt should have been a Caltech shirt. You know, the one I did in Monty Python one, that your mother is a high point and your father smelled of cosmo, smelt of Cosmoline. Uh, a lot of people thought that should be Keltex at a high point. So I decided I'd do this shirt with a Keltec on it just to make them happy. So go on over and get it. Or if you want to get another Halloween shirt, remember I did the one yesterday that is just a Halloween shirt. It's not got anything to do with guns even. Uh, it's just a Halloweener shirt, if you remember that one. So if you get that one, make sure if you wear it on Halloween to take a picture and send it to me because I want to do a video of people wearing that shirt on Halloween, even if it's only three or four people. Because I've only sold like four of them so far, I think. And even if half of you send me pictures, that'd be like two. So if you do get it and you do wear it, do take pictures and try to make sure they're not blurry and send them to me so that I can do a video on that. But uh, with that being said, I am out of here. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. I will see you all again on Monday. Until then, remember... Always carry and stay safe till I see you again. Mm -hmm.